Greetings in the name of the Lord. Hello, friends and family. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. The Bible declares in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 22, it tells us, The blessings of the Lord are rich and addeth no sorrow. Because when the Lord blesses you with true riches, you have nothing to regret. Because I believe that everyone who's listening to this particular episode, this particular podcast, can attest and testify that they are rich in Christ. We are wealthy because he blesses us with peace. And his peace gives us wholeness. He creates harmony, which simply means having a great relationship with God, having good relationship with others. The blessing of the Lord is to become perfectly well in our body, to become perfectly well in our soul, to become perfectly well in our mind, in our will, and in our emotions. Family, the blessings of the Lord gives us tranquility, where our spirits are at rest. We are not consumed by the toxicity of the chaos of this world. The blessings of the Lord provides riches that cannot be mistaken, because His blessings are supernatural. Because his spirit works best in unstable circumstances. The blessings of the Lord are filled with an abundance of fruit. And as Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 and 23 states, The fruit of the spirit makes us, hallelujah, loving, happy, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled. There is no law against behaving in any of these ways. When you understand, family, that we are already rich with God's riches, what the world offers does not compare to the riches that only God can provide for you. I'm so grateful for you all. I'm honored and blessed to continue to provide godly content that's designed to encourage you, to inspire you to new heights in God, to uplift you with strength, to face those challenges that are before you right now, because you can do all things through Christ that provides such strength. And ultimately, this godly content is created to empower you to live a full and meaningful life. This is our goal here at Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Today's message is entitled, A Position of Strength. A Position of Strength. What are the issues that are in front of us that we have to face? What are the concerns that many of us have going forward in life? You see, people of God, we are living in a day and a time where there is so much uncertainty of our future. The world is ever changing. The leadership of our country, our nation seems to be at odds with each other. And this energy, this negative energy is being passed on to us. And we all know about the potential wars with other countries that loom within our world. But what about the wars among ourselves? See, I'm speaking about the wars within our families, within the community the strife and division that's happening among us. And, excuse me, and the belief that this is 
the only way to receive or achieve success. I'm here to let you know that that this posture is not of God. The Bible says it this way. In the book of James, chapter 4, James, the half-brother of Jesus, writes to us with direct commands to pursue a life of holiness. Verses 1 through 10 of the book of James says, Why do you fight and argue with each other? Isn't it because you are full of selfish desires that fight to control your body? You want something you don't have and you will do anything to get it. You will even kill, but you still should pray for it. Yet even when you do pray, your prayers are not answered because you pray just for selfish reasons. You people aren't faithful to God. Don't you know if you love the world, you are, you are God's enemies. And if you decide to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you doubt the scriptures that say God truly cares about the spirit he has put in us? In fact, God treats us with even greater kindness, kindness, just as the scriptures say. God opposes who is proud. God opposes everyone who is proud, but he blesses all who are humble with undeserved grace. Surrender to God. Resist the devil and he will run from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Clean up your lives, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you people who can't make up your mind. Be sad and sorry and weep. Stop laughing and start crying. Be gloomy instead of glad. In this particular passage of scripture, he's saying the person who is humble should take a position of understanding how they have violated God's principles. Be gloomy instead of glad. Last verse says, be humble in the Lord's presence and he will honor you. Family, there's a war going on, and this war is greater than the threats of war that are looming throughout the world. It's the war that's, that's within us. It's the divine versus sin. It's corruption versus honor. It's humility versus pride. It's unity versus chaos. It's lust versus harmony. You guys get the picture. You guys get the point. God wants us to understand that being in a position of strength has everything to do with you understanding your position as a believer. You are a child of the Most High God. And it is necessary to see why you have, have to look to him for direction and wisdom when it comes to spiritual warfare. So today's episode entitled, A Position of Strength, here are some takeaways in this passage of scripture, verses 1 through 10 in the book of James chapter 4. The first point is, it says, why do you fight and argue with each other? Isn't it because you are full of selfish desires that control? You are full of selfish desires that fight to control your body? What a powerful question that 
Brother James poses to us. Our brothers and sisters, if you are living according to the world's wisdom and trying to get what you want is the root of the conflict. And these conflicts, whether you cause them or not, have to be handled with godly wisdom, have to be handled with godly care. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 expresses to us how we need to operate in a position of strength. It says, stop being bitter and angry and mad at others. Don't yell at one another or curse each other or even be rude. Instead, here's a person being in, in the position of strength. It says, instead, be kind and merciful and forgive others just as God forgave you because of Christ. Family, how does healing take place when we are, are at odds with one another? How does it take place when we are at odds with one another? It only takes place when we set the atmosphere for change to take place. Operating in this manner does not mean that you are a doormat or that it appears that you are in a weak position. That's the deception from the evil one. But what it really means is simply that you have to trust God. That he is going to work everything out, and I mean everything out, for your good. Romans 8.28 says, We know that God is always <laughs> at work. For the good of everyone who loves him, they are the ones God has chosen for his purpose. This is why in verse 2 it says, you want something you don't have and you are willing to do everything to get it. You will even kill, but you still cannot get what you want and... You won't get it by fighting and arguing. Hmm. God is working things out for our good. And that's why we have to lean on God's word to give us this promise that he's going to take everything, the bad, the good, the ugly, the uncertainty, and he works it out for our good so we don't have to fight or argue. So that's number one. We have to understand as believers in the Most High God that we don't need to fight and argue with one another. Number two, being in a position of weakness is when you pray just for selfish reasons. This type of behavior is coming from a position of weakness rather than praying from a position of strength. This type of action exalts personal desires over the will of God. When you selfishly pray because you want to fit God into the box of your own personal need, this, my friends, is sin in the eyes of God. Just because you want him to answer you in a certain way so that you can be happy is not of God. It's not the right thing to do. It's not the right, pos it's not the right position that you need to hold on to just so you can enjoy the things that you desire. You see, there's nothing wrong, family, with having a desire for things. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to enjoy life. But it has to be in line for his will, his will, for your life, not your will. 
Psalms 37 and 4 states, Do what the Lord wants, and he will give you your heart's desire. God's will over our selfish reasons. God's desire over our selfish desires. Putting God into your narrative will not produce the blessings of the Lord. Sorrow only comes when we operate from a position of weakness rather than living in a position of strength. That was number two. Number three, don't you know if you love the world, you are God's enemies? And if you decide to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Now, I want to come from another passage of scripture. It comes from 1 John, the second chapter, verses 15 through 17. The word of the Lord tells us, family, don't love the world or anything that belongs to the world. If you love the world, you cannot love the Father. Our foolish pride comes from this world. And so do our selfish desires and our desire to have everything we see. None of this comes from the Father. The world and the desires it causes are disappearing. But if we obey God, if we obey God and stand from a position of strength, we will live forever. God's word is spelling out the details right before our eyes of loving the world or have become a friend of the world. He says that the world and the desires it causes are disappearing. Now, it may look like it's actually gaining steam, but the act in actuality, family, this is actually disappearing right before your eyes. They will vanish. The world and the desires it causes means it does not produce nor provide long-term success. It will not sustain itself. Living in a position of strength is being obedient to God and standing on his principles and his promise. This is the reassurance that we will live with him forever and that we will live forever. The Bible also speaks on loving the world and the world system of doing things. If you become a friend of the world, you are in a position of weakness, for it is the road or path that leads to destruction. And there are two paths, and we have two choices, family. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus explains to us being in the position of weakness compared to living in the position of strength. He says to us this day, he says the path that leads to destruction is wide and the road that leads there is easy to follow. A lot of people walk on that path. But the road to life is very narrow. The road that leads there is so hard to follow that only a few people find it. We must understand, family, where we are going. What direction are you choosing to follow? Have you become influenced by others? because they appear to know where they're going, what they're doing? Or 
Are you willing to follow Jesus on his path called life? This is the question that stands before us this day. We have decisions to make. Will you choose to live your life in a position of strength? Or will you be willing to walk on the wide road that leads to destruction? Number four, God opposes everyone who is proud, but he blesses all who are humble with undeserved grace. You see, family, humility is essential in living in a position of strength. You see, people of God, humility is a state of mind, not just in outward appearance. In the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verse 12, it states, God loves you and has chosen you as his own special people. So be gentle, kind, humble, humble, meek and patient. You see, operating from a position of strength requires us to be gentle, to be kind toward one another, to be humble, to be meek and to be patient. But how many of us demonstrate on a consistent basis these attributes? Our loved ones need to see this in us. The people on the job need to see these attributes. The person at the grocery store needs to feel this God-given gift. Anyone you come into contact with, they need to experience these, experience these powerful agents working at all times. Because God opposes everyone who is proud. And you know who you are. When you come off very prideful, when you allow pride to run your life, rather than allowing humility to actually define who you are. So God knows and you know where you need to be. But, family, he blesses all who are humble with undeserved grace with undeserved grace. And there's a part in um, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7, where it states, people judge others by what they look like, but I judge people by what is in their hearts. The Bible says in James chapter Four, verse 7 surrender to God resist the devil and he will run from you come near to God and he will come near to you clean up your lives you sinners purify your hearts you people who can't make up your mind. Being in a place of strength requires a giving up your will to surrender your will to his will. It's, it's, it's a place of vulnerability where you are trusting in God wholeheartedly and not wavering. It's, it's a moment where you step away from your comfort zone to entrust your life to Jesus Christ, to allow him to lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But we must, in order to be in a position of strength, we must surrender to God and allow him to fight our battles. It says surrender to God Next part of it says, resist the devil and Satan will run from you. What does this word resist means? It means to withstand, strive against, 
or oppose in some manner. Resistance can be a defensive maneuver on our part, such as resisting or withstanding the temptation to sin. Or, family, it can be an action when we use the only offensive weapon. And God's word state in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 18 it tells us so put on all the armor that God gives then when the evil day comes you will be able to defend yourself and when the battle is over you will still be standing firm be ready let the truth be like a belt around your waist and let God's justice protect you like armor. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. Let your faith be like a shield, and you will be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let God's saving power be like a helmet, and for a sword, Use God's message that comes from the Spirit. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. This, my friends, is being in a position of strength. God's armor is designed to withstand the tricks and schemes that our adversary challenges us on a daily basis. Being in a position of strength gives us the ability to defend ourselves and will make our enemy run from the premises of our hearts. <laughs> the reality is this, family. Satan cannot win this battle. He never has and he never will. God's word is telling us this day that when the battle is over, when the war has ceased, you will be standing firm. That's good news to us. For those who are standing in the position of strength. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, it tells us, Don't be afraid. I am with you. Don't tremble with fear. I am your God. I will make you strong as I protect you with my arm and give you victories. So listen, family, friends, having the right mindset when faced with a crisis or a challenge that appears to be difficult is understanding our position as a child of God. Because our adversary can only attack your vulnerabilities, fear, anxiousness, Worry and doubt are the areas that Satan focuses on. And now we tend to look at things differently when we are operating from a position of weakness. But today, today's message of hope is a friendly reminder that God is with us. He develops in us strength that cannot and will not be defeated. So my lasting word for you this beautiful day is that if God is with us, who, tell me who, is against us? Today I want you to be encouraged and I want you to continue to keep shining and thank you once again for tuning in to Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for just giving us these words of comfort, these words of direction and hope. 
And Lord God, you know our desires is that we want to please you. We want to honor you with the way we live our lives. Help us to remain humble. Help us not to get into arguments that are not productive. Help us to have restraint and for us to operate always under your power. You've given us the fruit. You've given us the fruit of the Spirit that will be able to thwart off the enemy's advances towards us, towards our heart. So I pray, O oh God, that we will always operate from a position of strength and not of a position of weakness. But your word also declares where we are weak, that you will make us strong. You've given us the assurance not to be afraid that you are with us every step of the way, but that you are so kind and considerate of us that you would never violate our will that we have with you. So help us to make the right decisions when the enemy comes in like a flood. Help us to allow you to lift up that standard to make the enemy run from the premises of our hearts so we can always enjoy the freedom that you've given us through Christ Jesus. He gave us life so we can not only have eternal life, but he has given, us, given up his life so we can be free to operate in freedom under your direction. Thank you for all that you have done and that you will continue to do. Bless every person who's listening to this episode entitled A Position of Strength, that they will recognize that you have given your life so we could become part of your family. And your ultimate goal is to protect us and to equip us how to handle our adversary. We can't do anything in our own strength. We can't win this battle on our own. Only you can make this become an everyday moment where we always recognize your glory shining through our lives. Bless us this day and every day. We ask all of these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, everybody, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. I hope that you enjoyed this episode, this message of hope entitled A Position of Strength. I believe it blessed your soul. I know it blessed mine as I was preparing for it this week. So please understand we are children of the Most High God and we're able to do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. So listen, if there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, email us uh, inboxes uh, with any information that you may want to ask for to help you along your Christian journey. Or if you just want a word of encouragement or prayer for a certain situation, please reach out to us through our email, which is fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on um, X and you can follow us on our YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe to the channel. And share with your friends and your family that we have these episodes to provide for you words of hope, words of encouragement to not only just inspire you, to equip you, but to empower you to live a full and meaningful life. God has given us this platform for us to share his message. So please pray for us as we pray for you. If you'd like to make a financial contribution to this ministry, you can give through Givelify, which is a very safe site for making donations to this ministry. Or you can give to our cash app, which is the dollar sign, full of life. Last two letters are capitalized, S-D. Once again, that is the cash app, which is the dollar sign, full of life. Last two letters are capitalized SD. 
We thank you guys for just being with us over these last four years. We're excited for the future. We know that with Christ, it's going to be a beautiful moment to see him at work. It's not so much what we do, but he allows for us to take this panoramic view to watch him share his message. This has nothing to do with Pastor Phil, but it has everything for allowing his message of hope to resonate in the hearts of mankind all over the world. And every month, every week, we see people just clicking on to Full of Life Ministries of San Diego's podcast. They tune in and they keep tuning in. And so this message started off inside of my car over four years ago in a parking lot. And now there's places that we've uh, ministering to all around the world that blows my mind that this thing called podcasting has that power to be able to help God's people. And it's a blessing to watch and to witness. But the good news is you now are a part of the Full of Life Ministries podcast family. So we are connected at the hip family. (laughs) Pray for us as we pray for you and let's continue to share this message of hope around the world. Listen, everybody, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And guess what? We'll see you next time here at Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. God bless you.